the amazing Mr. Malone. Operator? Operator, get me the office of John J. Malone. The National Broadcasting Company presents The Amazing Mr. Malone. An exciting half hour of mystery starring George Petrie as the lawyer whose practice before every type of bar has become a legend. Our locale is the city of Chicago, the time, the present, and the hero of these weekly adventures, the amazing Mr. Malone. Malone's a name, John J. Malone, attorney and counselor at law. Tonight, in our study of the cliché, let's take a gander at hard work never kill anyone. You can never prove that by Danny Braden. Danny is the dark-haired boy in the small furnished apartment on Chicago's south side. Danny is what is known in the trade as a solitary drinker. And he's just made an amazing discovery. Your liquor goes a lot further that way. Danny. Danny... What the devil do you want, Thelma? Well, I don't want to nag you, darling. You're certainly giving a darn good imitation. I only meant... What's the matter? You're deaf? See who that is. Sure, darling. Just a minute. I'm coming. Yes? I'm looking for a Danny Braden. What do you want with him? I'm an old buddy of his from L.A. Just tell him it's Jack Bucktell. Well, what are you doing here? Oh, hiya, Danny. Good to see you. What do you want, Bucktell? Now, is that any way to talk... Your little girl here would think you weren't glad to see me. She'd be right. That's gratitude for you. And to think the minute I stepped off that bus, I made tracks right over here. Shouldn't have bothered. There's no bother at all. How you doing, Danny? Swell. You don't look it. Well, you know me, Buck. I never believed in being ostentatious. Can you use a hundred grand? Are you kidding? Darling. Shut up. What? Where can we talk? What's the matter with this? Two things. One, you haven't invited me in. What's the other? Her. They're both no problems. All right, Thumb, I'll go take yourself a walk. No. You're going to get mixed up in something. Don't you understand English? I make it a nice long walk, like from here to Evanston. Well? All right, Danny. Better call me before you come home. I like a girl who can mind. Sit down. Thanks. You, uh, said something about a hundred grand? Uh, Not so fast, Danny boy. There are one or two things we got to iron out first. Such as? I got to be protected. Okay. Then, um, sign right here. What is this? Just a little agreement that we split 50-50 on your income for the next ten years. You think I'd be stupid enough to sign this? Why? What do you got to lose? Well, if I went to work, you... (laughs) You wouldn't do a thing like that. Don't be so smart. Let's not kid each other, Danny. I know you from a way back. You've got no more intention of doing an honest day's work than I have. Now, if you want to sign that agreement, okay. If you don't, that's all right, too. Give me a pen. Mm Mm-hmm. There you are. Daniel M. Britton. How's that? Oh, it's fine. Now, what's the deal? You remember a little girl you were married to named Gloria Mason? This your idea of a gag? How long has it been since she got killed in that fire? What, are you a comic? Uh, just humor me for a couple of minutes, will you? It was six years ago. As I recall, they never did find her body. Nothing left to find. Just some silver bridge work. I bet you can afford platinum now. What are you babbling about? She's alive, Danny. You're nuts. She started that fire herself. What? Why? Get away from you. What kind of crack is that? I tell you, Gloria's right here in town. Only she calls herself Glenda. Glenda? Yeah. That isn't all she changed. She doesn't have that red hair anymore. And she's married. Married? Uh Uh-huh. To a fellow named Phil Stacy. Phil? The Stacy that owns the Belmont Casino? Uh Uh-huh. I understand she's nuts about him. You must be out of your mind. Well, there's one way to convince yourself. Go up and see. And while you're at it, you might ask her for a couple of bucks. You know, so you can afford a cab back. I'm sure she wouldn't want her husband to walk. Yes? Well, uh, 
What do you know? What? I never would have believed it if I hadn't seen it with my own eyes. Look, mister. What's the matter, Gloria? Don't you recognize your one and only? It's Danny. If you don't get out of here... What do you do? Scream? Yes. Then go right ahead. Phil! Phil! Uh, of course, we both know he isn't home. I made sure of that. Now, look, mister. I don't know who you are. Oh, now, Gloria. You couldn't have forgotten all we meant to each other. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, maybe I know a way to show you. Does that bring back fond memories? What do you want, Danny? I knew it would ring a bell. What do you want? Only what's mine. You. No. Ah, now you're my wife, honey. You don't know how I missed you. I'm sure you found someone else to beat up. Oh, now, Gloria. Oh, I beg your pardon, Glenda. There never was anyone like you. Well... What do you say you pack your bags and I'll take you home? Let me go. Oh, come on, sweetie. You'll love it. Once you get used to the bugs. What are you after? I told you. You. I only hope Phil won't be disappointed. You're not going to say a word to him. I'll kill you if you do. Well, he's bound to find out. After all, he thinks he's married to you. How much do you want? Now, you think I came here for money? How much do you want? I never thought of it like that. <laughs> But, uh, if you'd rather stick with Phil, why, uh, far be it from me to interfere with your happiness. Let's, uh, let's make it five grand. That's a nice round figure. Don't be a fool. Where would I get it? Oh, it doesn't have to be cash, honey. I'll take your check. I'm sure you wouldn't stop payment. How do I know you won't be back again? Of course I will, Glenda. You're my wife. Now, what kind of husband would I be not to drop by when I'm in the neighborhood? And I intend to be around real often. Hello. Hello, Thelma. How goes the battle? Who is this? Jack Buxell. Is Danny around? Just a second. It's for you, Danny. Who is it? Mr. Bucktell. Hello. Hiya, Danny. Fine. How'd you make out? How'd I make out? I understand you were up to see Mrs. Stacy this afternoon. Where do you understand that from? Oh, I got ways and means at my disposal. How did we do? We didn't do. I don't get you, Danny. Very simple, Buck. This isn't the right dame. Listen, friend. Well, I ought to know I was married to her. Look, boy, don't try to hop me around. Never entered my mind. Sorry it worked out this way, Buck. But uh, maybe we can get together on something else sometime. Give me a call if you get any ideas. Some more coffee, Glenda? What? I asked if you wanted some more coffee. Oh, no, thanks, Phil. What's the trouble, baby? Trouble? We haven't said two words since we sat down. Well, I, I got a slight headache. You want some aspirin? No, I'll be all right. Maybe if you ate something. I'm not hungry. You haven't been hungry for a week. If you don't stop picking on me. Sorry, honey. No, it's it's my fault, Phil. I, I'm just on edge. Well, I'm going to call Doc Wilburn and ask No, no I, I don't want you to. I tell you, I'm perfectly all right. Then what's bothering you? Nothing. Absolutely nothing, I swear. Look, Glenda. I promised when we got married I'd never ask any questions. I know that, Phil, and I, I appreciate it. But if something's worrying you and you want to tell Papa, he'll always be ready to listen. Remember that. Doris, this is Danny Braden. Oh, hiya, Danny. My missus there? Huh, what? Thelma. No, no, she ain't. Oh, I just got in to find a note saying she's gone over to see you. Well, she left here ten minutes ago. I think she had an appointment with John J. Malone. Who? You know, that lawyer fella. What does she want with Malone? Well, I don't know, Dan... Oh, gee, I shouldn't have told you. You won't say nothing. Don't you worry, Doris. I won't breathe it to a... <laughs>
Just a second. I said just a second. Yeah? Uh, I'm looking for John J. Malone. If you try the Prescott building, I understand he's got an office there. His secretary told me he's never in. Oh. And then she said if it was real important, I could find him here. She's just a great big blabbermouth, ain't she? Uh-huh. Let's skip it. Come on in, Mrs. Uh... Oh, B- Braden. Thelma Braden. Sit down. Well... You don't have to worry. I won't bite. I left my uppers in my other head. What? I don't try to figure it out. It's not worth it. What's your problem? Problem? There must be an echo in here. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Malone. It's just that I'm nervous. Why? Well, I, I... I've never done anything like this before. Danny would kill me if he knew. Danny, I take it as your husband. Yes. You want a divorce? Oh, no. Then what is it? Well, you see, I, I married Danny three years ago after his first wife died in a fire. Well? Well, just for the sake of argument, suppose she didn't die. Suppose she was still alive. Well, that she's still his wife. It doesn't matter. Oh, don't stop on my account, Malone. Didn't your mother ever teach you to knock, Lieutenant? Uh, she also taught me not to be noisy. Uh, sit down, Lieutenant. Thanks, I will. Look, Brooks, I happen to be very busy. And you're going to be a lot busier before the day is over. Pay no attention to him, Thelma. I'm afraid she's going to have to. I'm with the police, Mrs. Braden. What? How did you know her name was Braden? Oh, you'd be surprised what I know about her. She's 31, blonde, and uh, recently widowed. Widowed? All right, Sidney, what are you getting at? Her husband was murdered an hour ago. No. Yes. You're lying. You're making this all up. Ah, oh, you know better. Are you accusing her? Uh-huh. Oh, no, no. Oh, I wouldn't worry, Thelma. Didn't they tell you Malone was amazing? Why, with him on your side, all you can possibly lose is your life. Ain't that a comforting thought? You're listening to The Amazing Mr. Malone. It's the Silver Jubilee on NBC. East and West meet as Mr. Moto moves swiftly against those who would corrupt and destroy freedom-loving people everywhere. On the national front, Martin Kane, Private Eye, will find himself involved in plenty of action as he becomes involved in whirlwind adventures beginning July 1st. Mr. Moto and Martin Kane, two invitations to suspense, intrigue, and mystery over your favorite NBC station. And now, back to the amazing Mr. Malone. One nice thing you can say for my apartment. It's convenient. Within the space of five minutes, I had two visitors and both gifted conversationalists. The first was Thelma Braden. The second, Lieutenant Brooks, and the dialogue was real scintillating. Then Brooks got started on a monologue. That's when the party got dull. It's my duty to warn you, Mrs. Braden, that anything you say may be used in evidence. Why don't you shut up? Can't you see she's in a state of shock? Thelma. Huh? Can you understand me? He said I killed Danny. He didn't mean it. Didn't I? Now, look, Sidney, use your head. Where's her motive? Oh, you're just talking to pad your part. Where's her motive? Why, that husband of hers used to beat her like she was whipped cream. That's not true. Are you kidding? The neighbors told me he cupped you around regularly. I didn't care. Then why were you consulting Malone? Well, I... That's a confidential matter. How did you know she was here? My friend must have told him. You mean Doris? You're right. Now, listen to me, Thelma. Remember that matter we were discussing before he walked in? Uh, what? Well, you know about this girl you knew whose husband thought she was dead? The girl I knew... Yeah, the one who was supposed to be burned in that fire. What was her name? I... I can't think. You've got to tell me. Look, is this a private game, or can a stranger take a hand? It's private. Uh, it's Stacy. Glenda Stacy. Phil Stacy's wife? I don't know. Well, I'll check. You go along with Brooks now. You mean I can have her? Don't get your hopes up, Lieutenant. She's only for a lend. I'll be back for her after I look up another prospect. <laughs> Come in. Hello, Phil. Well, if it isn't the amazing Mr. Malone, come on in. Thanks. Hey, hey, it's quite a place. You know, I've never been up here. Like it? Why shouldn't I? Didn't I furnish it? What are you talking about? Well, I figure with the dough I dropped at your club, I must have at least bought the drapes. (laughs) Sit down. Thanks. Drink? What do you got? Scotch? That's my boy. Say when. Yes, one of those things. Yes, one of those yeah. What about you? No, I'll sit this one out. Well, like they say, here's to crime. Hmm. All right, Malone, what's in your mind? 
Well, can't a man just drop around for a sociable drink? Uh, not if you're the man. Well, I was kind of hoping to meet your wife. I've heard a lot about her. she around? No. When will she be back? I have no idea. In that case, suppose we have a little talk. Does it concern Glenda? Vitally. Then I don't want to hear it. I don't discuss my wife with strangers. How do you know I'm a stranger? Maybe Glenda and I have a big romance brewing. Oh, don't make me laugh. You know my reputation. Yeah, you're a sucker for a long shot. What's that supposed to mean? Take it any way you like. Look, Phil, I want to be on the level with you. I represent a Thelma Brady. I told you I wasn't interested. Well, you ought to be, because your wife... That's enough, Malone. I think you'd better go. You know, Phil, you're a remarkable guy. There are not many men around who would trust their wives so implicitly. I wouldn't know. Well, I would. Thanks for the drink, and tell Glenda I was sorry to miss her. Maybe I'll catch her on the next round. That you, Glenda? Yes, Bill. Over okay. here. Let me help you with those packages. Oh, thanks, darling. Uh, how do you feel? Oh, much better. Good. Would you like a drink? I'd love it. You sit down right over here and Pop will take care of it. Did you bring the evening papers? Oh, I, I forgot. Well, it doesn't matter. All the news is bad. Which reminds me, John J. Malone was up to see you this afternoon. Who? You know, a lawyer. But he's representing Thelma. What did he want? I didn't give him a chance to say. Hey, don't you want your drink? What did he say, Phil? I told you I wouldn't listen to him, but I will to you. I, I don't understand. Look, baby, you know our deal. I never asked you about anything, but if you're in a jam, I want to know about it. I, I tell you, everything's fine, darling. All right, Glenda. Let it be like you say, everything's fine. And Malone or no Malone, Papa's going to keep it that way. <laughs> Tom. Mr. Malone? That's right. I'm so glad to find you in. You don't know the trouble I had getting your address. You shouldn't have bothered. Oh, I don't mind. All right, let's get it over with. I beg your pardon? Look, Junior, this is an old story to me, though generally I find him waiting inside. Weren't you sent here to warn me off? How in the world did you know that? I'm amazing. Besides, that bulge in your pocket gave you away. Oh, you mean this old thing. Hey, isn't that kind of heavy for a little man like you to carry? But then that makes you a big man, doesn't it? Oh, definitely. Who sent you? Glenda Stacy? And why would Mrs. Stacy want to do that? Because we both know she killed Danny Braden. Did she? Absolutely. She was legally married to Braden, and he was probably shaking her down. Oh, so she took the obvious way out. See my point? Well, isn't there something you're overlooking? You're right. Pardon? I'd completely forgotten about her husband. Did Phil send you? Oh, why should he? Well, by his own admission... Oh, he... I wouldn't. If I were you. I was just trying to get a cigarette. That's yes, well, you can smoke mine. No nicotine. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Now, you were saying? Oh, yeah. Phil would do anything in the world for his wife. Would he? Yeah, well, that's what he claimed, and I see no... Re Wait a minute. Now, don't tell me you thought of something else. Yes, indeed. Danny must have just recently found out Glenda was living. Would you believe I have no idea what you're talking about? Oh, it doesn't matter. I was just thinking out loud. Do you mind? No, not at all. Well, the way I see it, Danny must have learned about Glenda in the past few weeks. Otherwise, this whole affair would have been precipitated a long time ago. Now... How did Danny find out? Uh, may I offer a suggestion? Uh, please do. Maybe he saw her on the street? No, no, that's too convenient. There has to be another party who supplied the information. Does it? That's the only way it adds up. Now, who could have tipped off Danny that Glenda was alive? I have no idea. Mm. Well, thanks anyway, friend. You've been real sweet to let me run on like this. Oh! What's the matter, kid? Can't you take it down there? You... Yeah, I know. I ought to be ashamed for hitting anyone smaller than myself. But you don't think a bully like me would hit anyone bigger. Oh! Oh! Hey, Sussman, how do you spell consensus? Don't tell him, Hank. You're no stool pigeon. Oh, no. Make for the hell's man. That man's here again. Look, you idiot. I want to talk to you. No speaker to English. I'm not kidding, Lieutenant. I got the whole thing figured out. When haven't you? I'm serious. Thelma Braden didn't kill her husband. Well, naturally you'd say that. Naturally, and I've just been with the boy who can prove it. Well, why didn't you bring him with you? He was in no condition to travel. He had a gun, and I saw no point in letting him use it. Coward. Who sent him? Well, he wouldn't say, but I'd be willing to hazard a guess. All right, let's hear it. Try and stay with me. Now, Danny Braden was blackmailing Phil Stacy's wife. Why? Because she was really Danny's wife. She was never legally married to Phil. Now, now, this couldn't possibly be as confusing as you make it sound. Well, if you think it's rough, wait till you hear the rest. Danny thought she was dead. Recently, he learned she was alive. Now, 
That information had to come from someone. Who was it? Well, you tell me. I'm the Schlemiel, remember? Okay. It came from the same guy who sent that punk junior grade around to knock me off. And who's that? Phil Stacy. Are you out of your mind? Well, who'd be in a better position to know all about Glenda's background? Well, why would Phil want to blackmail his own wife? That's what I keep telling you. She's not his wife. All right, why'd he want to blackmail Glenda? He's in the chips. Where do you suppose that bankroll came from originally? Glenda? Sure. She must be the one who's loaded. Phil's past is a mystery. And when Glenda left Danny, she must have waltzed off with all of Danny's dough. Uh, this assumes he had money at one time. Yeah. Now, let's see if I understand you. It's your theory Phil was blackmailing Glenda through Danny. Hooray, you caught on. Yeah. Well, I'll have to give you credit, Malone. You were right on one count. The information that Glenda was alive did come through a third party, only it wasn't Phil Stacy. It came from a fellow named Jack Bucktell. But if Phil wasn't the one who supplied the information... Then you were wrong on count two. Yeah, but don't feel too badly. You were 50% right, and for you, that's a 49% improvement. Keep it up, Counselor. You're doing fine. You are listening to The Amazing Mr. Malone. It's the Silver Jubilee on NBC. They say there's a thin line between the real and the unreal. A place where time stands still. A land of silent mystery. We bring you excursions into the unknown. Journeys into the future and through the shadow-filled corridors of the minds of men. On Dimension X. A program designed to bring you the unusual. Tom Conway brings us back to reality as the debonair gentleman adventurer Simon Templer, who finds suspense and mystery awaiting him as the saint. And here's another program note. Be sure to hear Martin Kane, Private Eye, beginning on this station July 1st and featuring the well-known screen star Lloyd Nolan. Dimension X, The Saint, and Martin Kane, three top programs designed for your summer entertainment over NBC, where the chimes are. And now, back to the amazing Mr. Malone. They say you can't keep a good man down, and they're absolutely right. For if Lieutenant Brooks thought he had knocked me out with his haymaker that Jack Bucktell supplied the information to blackmail Glenda, he was wrong. It was a bad blow, all right, but I picked myself right off the floor and stepped into another. So Phil needed Glenda's dough, huh? Why, you schmo boy, Phil's been in the chips since 1930. All right, so I made a mistake. It's nice of you to admit it. I can't help myself. Where's this Jack Bucktell now? You know, I had a hunch you'd ask that, and I happen to be prepared with an answer. Sussman, show in Mr. Bucktell. Never mind, I can make it myself. Listen, Lieutenant, if you know what's good for Don't you... Don't be silly. If I knew what's good for me, I never would have been a cop. This is John J. Malone. So? So act impressed. He's a big man. Sit down, Bucktell. I want to talk to you. I got nothing to say. Lieutenant, could you leave us alone for a couple of minutes? Well, you think it's safe? He outweighs you by 40 pounds. Uh, yeah, on second thought, maybe you better stick around. Now, listen, Bucktell... How much did Danny give you? What do you mean, how much did he give me? Oh, the money he blackmailed from Glenda. No, he didn't get a dime from her. So he held out on you? No, he didn't. He just admitted there was no split? That's because there was nothing to split. He told me Glenda wasn't the right girl. But you knew better. I knew nothing of the kind. And when you learned Danny double-crossed you, you killed him? No. Nah. You went to his apartment and you shot him in the back? Oh, you're crazy. All right, Brooks, what are you waiting for? Did you hear him confess? No. Well, he practically admitted... I didn't hear him. You just haven't been reading between the lines. And all the reading you've done must have strained your eyes. He couldn't have killed Danny. Why not? Because at the time of the murder, he was in Detroit. He what? You heard me. Had to fly Sussman there this morning to pick him up. Well, that doesn't make sense. If he didn't kill Danny... Then it's barely possible your client did. Well, thanks for helping us out, Malone. I don't know what I'd do without you. Yes. I bet you're Glenda Stacy. I beg your pardon? Uh, my name's John J. Malone. Didn't your husband tell you I was around earlier today? No, he didn't. Well, I was. Unfortunately, I missed you. Well, what can I do for you, Mr. Malone? Well, uh, you can invite me in. I think that'd be a mistake. Oh, hi, Phil. I didn't see you. It's pretty obvious. What do you want, Malone? Well, I just dropped by to apologize. Apologize? Yeah. Uh, can I come in? All right. Thanks. Now, this is uh, a lovely place you have here, Glenda. Glenda? 
Well, I feel I know you so well. After all, I've heard so much about you. All right, Malone, what do you want? You were much more hospitable this afternoon. You invited me to have a drink, remember? What do you want? I guess I'll have to buy my own. I don't know where the money's going to come from. Gee, get to the point. Well, as I started to tell you, I represent a Thelma Braden. I think you better leave us alone, Glenda. No, I want to hear this. I don't blame you, lover. It's pretty good yarn. You see, Thelma was married to a boy named Danny. You don't have to go into that. We read it in all the papers. Not all, Phil. You see, Thelma wasn't really married to him. Legally, he was still Glenda's husband. What? That's a lie. You should have told him, lover. Look, Malone, what are you trying to hand me? You folks have nothing to worry about. With Danny dead, there's nothing to prevent you from getting remarried. I don't like those kind of jokes. It's no joke, Phil. But I did do you an injustice. Some gunsel came up to my apartment early this afternoon, and like a fool, I jumped to two conclusions. One, that you sent him. Now, look, Malone. Now, just hear me out. I also came up with a weird theory that you were behind a blackmail plot to shake down Glenda. Are you out of your mind? I must have been. Lieutenant Brooks told me you were the one with the money. I didn't take his word for it, so I checked with your bank. He was right. Where do you get I know. I got my nerve. They told me something else. That in the last month, Glenda here issued four checks to Danny Braden. I know about that. No. Sure I did, baby. He's telling the truth, lover. He saw the endorsement. So? So, being the kind of man you are, naturally, it took steps... And all of them in the direction of Danny Braden's apartment. No. Then later you sent that punk around to scare me off when you thought I was going to hang Danny's murder on Glenda. Are you trying to say I killed him? I thought I did. Why, you know... Lieutenant, good... he wants to slug me. Oh, I wish I hadn't come in so fast. Go on, you're too big a ham to miss a cue. Now fool the public and act like a policeman. <laughs> Hey, George, how about a little service here? Oh, what are you complaining about, Malone? We're getting as little as possible. Oh, I don't know why I come here every week. Everybody's a comic. Uh, listen, listen, Malone. What do you want? Uh, how did you know Phil killed Danny Braden? Well, it all came down to the process of elimination. Mm -hmm. You had a cast iron alibi for Jack Bartell. So? So, that took care of him. And as far as Glenda was concerned... It wasn't in character for her to commit murder, or she would have done it long ago. Look what she went through to get away from Danny. And then when he turned up again, she paid him off. Well, maybe, uh, maybe she got tired of that. Never. You know, the first touch is always the hardest for a blackmailer. Once the victim kicks through from then on, it's clear sailing. So, that took care of Glenda and left us Phil. Uh, oh, why didn't he let on to Glenda that he knew about Danny? Because that's the kind of a guy Phil is. He was crazy about her. If she thought she was keeping something from him, he wasn't going to let on. Now, does that take care of all your questions? No, no. This is all well and good about the process of elimination, but there's one party in this deal you overlooked. Who? Your client. Why couldn't Thelma have been guilty? Because you made the pinch. Well? Well, you were right last week, so now it had to be my turn. After all, I'm the one who's amazing. Good night, Lieutenant. <laughs> story of a man who came up with an interesting theory about life, then one of his friends shot it full of holes. As a lawyer, I can tell you, it was murder. I'll fill you in on the gory details next week, so why not pick me up in my office at the same time? I'll be waiting for you. Good night. George Petrie was starred as John J. Malone with Larry Haynes as Lieutenant Brooks. Our program is written by Eugene Wang and directed by Richard Lewis. The Amazing Mr. Malone is based on a famous character created by Craig Rice and produced by Bernard L. Schubert. The events and characters in this story were entirely fictional, and any resemblance to persons living or dead is entirely coincidental. Fred Collins speaking. The Amazing Mr. Malone has come to you from New York. Stay tuned for The Man Called X, next over most NBC stations.